In the first pediatric ward we visit, Esteban, six months old, has pneumonia. That is really ill. This baby's problem is compounded by malnutrition. His mother tells me he's been here for five days. You can hear the pneumonia in his lungs? Yes. Two yeah. minutes after I examine him, Esteban stops breathing. OK, OK, speed, speed. He's yeah. rushed to intensive care down the hall. My old colleague, Dr. Danny Feiken, and I follow. Uh, we need to bag it. Bring the ammo back quickly. Come, come. Come put oxygen. Into an intensive care unit with no special equipment. Hey, Mama. As a doctor, I've seen this before. I hope it's the first and last time you'll see it. The baby stopped breathing. They're giving some oxygen. They're trying to bring the baby back. This is the sort of violent CPR you do on a baby when their heart has stopped. Not hearing a heartbeat now. They're, they're going to give some drugs to try and get the heart going again, some adrenaline. What he really needs is a ventilator because he's too tired to breathe on his own. To understand this, I need to show you this. Some of the worst urban living conditions in Africa. This maze of alleys and shanties covers just one square mile, but it's a bustling community of nearly one million Kenyans. Mothers who pick up their children from school and working class commuters just trying to get by. Danny says everywhere he goes, Kenyans greet him with the only English phrase they know. How are you? How are you? How are you? We used to call that the how are you song. And how do you respond? Fine, fine. <laughs> everywhere you look, open sewers, pirated electricity. How are you? How are you? Hello. Margaret's little girl, Nicole, is recovering from pneumonia. Sounds very good. Her chest sounds clear. She's heard there's a shot that could save Benjamin. Would you like to get the vaccine for Benjamin? Yeah. Yeah? As we head out to get the shot, other mothers join us. You're coming to get the shots too. We're going to the CDC clinic that first tested this vaccine. Baby number one gets the shot. Baby Benjamin is up next. The camera shuts off for a moment, but then. We all have to leave the building, there's a fire. We have to go, we'll come back. fire. We'll come back. Moto, back. moto. We all evacuate, yeah, but the camera this keeps way. rolling. We have to go. Okay. What about the mothers we brought? What about the mothers we brought? Come with us. Let's go. Come on. Up to the left. The fire is just about 50 yards from the clinic. Where's Danny? Where's Danny? Head up the hill. Come this way. People here have so little. They're carrying their televisions, their beds, up the hills, right where we're standing. A whole section of the slum's on fire. Here in the slum, there's no fire department. There's no one to come put it out. What they do is they break open a pipe and they try and put it out themselves, but the damage can be incredible. So some people will lose absolutely everything. I don't know how many homes were burned or if anyone was hurt, but the babies we brought there later get the vaccine. It's the vaccine that baby Esteban never got. Is there a heartbeat? No. No. I talked to my mother. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Perhaps if they'd had a ventilator at the hospital. Perhaps if he wasn't so malnourished to begin with. I'm sorry. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, the baby died. Perhaps his mother wouldn't be walking down the corridor alone. As this punishing day comes to a close, the children in Kibera still ask, how are you? I'm relieved to tell you, as more and more of them get the vaccine, they're better and better.